Hello and welcome to the character creation for the second Pathfinder Kingmaker DLC, Varnhold's Lot. We are going to be playing as this lovely half-orc here, but before we get into it, what is Varnhold's Lot? Well, basically, Varnhold is another barony in the game. And in the game, there are a couple baronies that are all created at the same time, which are granted out for basically cleaning up the stolen lands a little bit from bandits. You're playing as the general to... Magyar Varn, who has got one of these baronies. And basically, you're experiencing Varnhold's story before the main character comes in and interacts with it. So, this is where we're going to pick up. And I want to play a character who's a little bit more e on the evil side than on the good side. Because last time, well, in the main game, we basically played a character who's very much kind of like, oh yeah, everyone's cool, we're chill, we're pretty much, uh, you know, we're very forgiving, we're very open. This is not the, how we're going to be playing it here. We're somebody who has been kind of, half-orcs are kind of rejected. They're looked down upon. We're somebody who's risen up and we're, we are going to punch back down again, unfortunately. That's the kind of character we are. But we're going to be lawful about it. We're going to follow the rules and we're going to use the rules to our advantage. So, this is us here. So, let's jump into it. Oh, another reason for this is Varnhold kind of has some problems that materialize later and that's why the main character gets involved i want to help these problems along because the problems are happening one way or another we're going to be potentially a cause and i think that would be cool to give ourselves some sort of um push through now i have absolutely no idea what kind of effect we can have on the story whether we're just along for the ride but i like to have an idea of wh what kind of character we're going to be playing as before i go in also helps with kind of what class and things we want to play because it fits us a lot better so, half-orc. Uh, have we already chosen the... No, we for some reason it skipped that. Okay, that's fine. Half-orc. So we get plus two to one ability score at creation. The character gets a plus two to any ability score of their choice. Okay, fair enough. Skilled is the one where you get an additional skill rank at first level and one additional rank whenever they gain a level. Okay. Intimidating. Plus two racial bonus on persuasion checks when used to intimidate due to their fearsome nature. All right, fairly cool. We get Orc Weapon Familiarity, so we can use Great Axes, Falchions, and any weapon with the word Orc in its name. And we also get Orc Ferocity, which is not a great ability. When a half-orc is brought below zero hit points but not killed, he can fight on for one more round, as if disabled at the end of the round, unless brought to above zero hit points, he immediately falls unconscious. However, you can be brought below zero hit points, and if you go below, I think it's your con... Uh, I think it might be your hit dice plus your con modifier. Um, that kills you. That you're just killed. So, we don't want that to happen. Because if we get killed, the game ends. But, you know, we're just going to have to build a little bit tanky. And that's one of the things that we have to do. So, half-orcs get the worst of both worlds. Still, while not exactly accepted, half-orcs in civilized societies tend to be valued for their martial prowess. They are usually forced to grow up hard and fast, constantly fighting for protection or to make names for themselves. Feared, distrusted, and spat upon, half-orcs still consistently manage to surprise their detractors with great deeds and unexpected wisdom, though sometimes it's easier to just crack a few skulls. Both genders of half-orcs stand between 6 and 7 feet tall, with powerful builds and greenish or greyish skin. Their canines often grow long enough to protrude from their mouths, and these tusks, combined with the heavy brows and slightly pointed ears, gives them notoriously beastly a bestial appearance. While half-orcs may be impressive, few ever describe them as beautiful. Okay. So, what kind of half-orc are we looking like? I want to look a little bit like the picture. Do you want to be bulky or do you want to be... We could, be, we could look like a little wimpling half-orc. Yeah, let, let's, be, let's be a little bit smaller. Let, let's put that kind of half-orc. Um... Face-wise, yeah, we'll just look like that. That seems okay to me. Uh, is that the right color green for us? I guess so. They, they, ooh, some of them look interesting. Uh, we wanted a little bit lighter. Yeah, that one seems about right. Hairstyle. Uh, I think it was this one. We could be wrong. Uh, let's go with that hair. That hairstyle kind of matches a little bit. Beard, no beard. Hair color seems about right. Right, so that's us. This is our half-orc. Right. So what class are we going to play? 
Now, the classes I'm going to avoid are any that we went into a lot in the main game. So, uh, I'm going to avoid Sorcerer. I'm going to avoid Rogue, because we had two Rogues. Wizard as well. I want to be a fighter, so anything that's ranged or, like, um, or one that we played. So, uh, we're going to avoid Magus, Kineticist, Inquisitor. Although we didn't go too far into Inquisitor, it might work, but I want to avoid it anyway. It's not, I don't really want to be that kind of spellcaster. Fighter is one that we could take, because there are a lot of different kind of fighters. Druid? What kind of Druid options do we have? They're all kind of magic casters, aren't they? They do all appear to be kind of magic casters. Not really the way I want to go. We could go something into Cleric, but I don't really want to do that. Bard as well. There are kind of options there I don't want to do. Barbarian? Uh, now, we did have a Barbarian in the main game, but we didn't really play a Barbarian. So we could go something like Armored Hulk. So Barbarians disdain hides and leather. Mad Dog. Um, they were named for wild savages. Uh, Mad Dogs employ all manner of beasts as their battle brethren. Invulnerable Rager. I don't think we want to go for any of them. We're, we're not a barbarian. We have transcended or we moved up. Could go alchemist and go into something that's very much about um, understanding their body or something. And like becoming better, like self-buffing somehow. But I don't really want to do that either. Fighter is an interesting one. So we could just take like plain fighter, which is something we didn't have in the main game. Or Aldori Defender. So these sword lords... Okay, so they, get, um, they pit themselves against others, dueling swords and all manner of weaponry besides. Their speed and reflexes weave a net of impenetrable steel around them, which they strike and harry their unfortunate opponents. The most common form of Aldori dueling, and arguably the easiest among techniques to master, focuses on avoiding damage and disarming foes. These sword lords prefer to wear light or no armor, trusting their skill for protection. Potentially a way to go. Yeah, we could go with that. Uh, the other option is there are some, like, uh, melee rangers, aren't there? Is that Freebooter? No, that's Natural Leader, a Pirate. I thought there were melee rangers. Maybe, maybe not one here. Okay. Are there any rogues that sound more reasonable? Thug? Nah, we don't really want to go rogue of any kind. Uh, Monk is the only other one we could potentially go. So, like, um, I think, really. Uh, a Revered Teacher... A fist. Nah. I, I think I like fighter. I think I want to be an Aldori defender. I think that fits us quite well. So what do we get? We get a bonus combat feat. We get fighter proficiencies. And we get a dueling sword. Hopefully we actually get a dueling sword as well. But we'll see. Uh, I, I I quite like this. This, fit, this fits quite well. Right. So. What do we need for this? Well, sword wise. I imagine that we need strength. Although I'm not entirely sure if dueling swords use strength. But I would assume that they use strength. So let's put points up into strength, right? Let's put that many points into strength. And actually, because we tend to use light armor, maybe it's, it's good to put some points into dex as well. Get get that AC up there. And actually, I do want a couple points in con as well, just to keep us up there. So yeah, maybe that will work. Strength, dex, con. That's us. We have health, and we have armor class, and we have strength. Now, we do get to go up to level 5 in this um, character creation, so... There's a lot more that we can potentially do. We get one extra ability score at some point as well. Oh, we also get a racial bonus to one of these. Okay. Um, I think we should put a racial bonus on maybe strength or con. Con would mean that we get three 16s, which is actually a very, very solid character. Let's go for three 16s. Let's go for that. And then we get three of these abilities. Athletics seems fine. Uh, persuasion is quite useful because it allows us to change the way that uh, characters interact with us. So, which I quite like having. And then maybe Knowledge World. Maybe we're knowledgeable about the world, we're able to talk to people, and we're able to be um, athletically minded. That seems good. Right. Next. Okay, there we go. So, Weapon Focus, we could go into Dueling Sword and really double down on that. But if we don't start with a Dueling Sword, that seems like a very, very bad position. Dodge is interesting. It gives us a dodge bonus to our AC. Um, and also, that kind of works with the deck stuff as well. Improved initiative, always nice early on because um, early on there aren't that many rounds of combat. So if you can act quicker, you can definitely get more stuff done, potentially. There's one further down called Toughness, which is also quite nice. And two-weapon fighting could be interesting as well if we want to go with two weapons, which is something we definitely didn't do in the main game. I don't really want to go that way just yet because um, I don't think know if that's going to be useful. Toughness definitely could be useful, so that ba basically gives us an extra... Um, 8 health, which isn't that much, but could be the difference between dying and not dying. Um, I think that we're gonna take dodge. I think an extra AC seems very useful. 
Then we get another bonus combat feat. So, um, we don't really need a weapon proficiency because we should, in theory, be using a dueling sword. Uh, maybe we'll take improved initiative here. Yeah, there we go. Right. So, next level. Or, oh, actually, not before next level. We have to choose our voice. So, let's have a listen to them. I have no use for this. Forwards! No, no. Together we stand. Forwards! Let us bide our time. None shall escape! I didn't even break a sweat. Uh, okay, so they're all interesting. Let's shake a leg! I'm always ready. Defeat is not an option. This is my path. Maybe brave is the way that we're going to go here. Uh, and we are going to be born on the 8th of the 2nd, because it's the opposite to our main game character. Right, uh, alignment, I think lawful evil is the way that we're going. And what are we going to be named? Um, We're going to be named... Uh, let's have a think here. Well, we're an Aldori defender, right? So we're going to be called Al uh, Defone. Al Al Defone. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. My naming ID way of naming people is not amazing, but we'll be Al Defone there. Right. I won't give up. Okay. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't shout quite like that all the time. But there we go. And that's the stuff that we get for level 1. So we get a lot of little stuff for level 1. Right. You ready? Because level 2 is coming right up. We're going to take another four point in fighter. Surprise, surprise. We're only going 5 levels in. I don't want to mix it up too much. So we get bravery. So at starting at 2nd level, the fighter gains a plus 1 on will saves against fear. This bonus increases by 1 for every 4 levels beyond the 2nd. We also get another bonus combat feat. Okay. Uh, so we get our skill points, which we get three of, so we might as well put them in the three points that we have. And then here, what are we looking for? Well, we could go for something like light armor focus, which would get us more base attack, which could be an interesting idea. Endurance gets us more bonuses on athletics checks, which might be okay. That, that, that could definitely be somewhere to go, be very, very athletic. So anything else that really works for us? Um... Endurance, uh, combat mobility. So you get plus four dodge bonus to armor class against uh, attacks opportunity caused when you move out of threat. Something we're not really going to do very often. Blind fight. Visible attackers get no defenses against us. Combat reflexes make attacks of opportunity number of rounds equal to your dexterity bonus. Potentially quite useful, actually. Yeah. Especially if we go, if we uh, be a character that's going to, we're going to throw against, um, like, uh, what's it, like rangers. That could definitely be an interesting thing. So we could then move up to, um, not rangers, I'm thinking like an archer. Yeah, we could then move up to them and basically get like three attacks around. That seems really useful actually. Combat reflexes. Seems like something we might want to go with. Right. Uh, that all seems very good. Next. You get another point in fighter. And we get the defensive parry. At third level, when a sword lord makes a full attack with a dueling sword, he gains a plus one AC to DC. Sorry, a plus one bonus to AC. I don't know why I said AC to DC. That's very weird. Anyway, against melee attacks until the beginning of his next turn. The bonus is increased by plus one for every four levels beyond the third. So that's how we get our AC. Basically, you go light armor, and then you get a plus one bonus just from using a dueling sword. So I really hope we get a dueling sword, basically. It should be in our starting equipment, you'd imagine, but we'll see. Right. Get those ones. And next thing that we need to choose. Um... Great Fortitude could be alright. Is there anything we got from having uh, combat maneuvers up here? Doesn't look like we got anything else from that. Okay, occasionally feats unlock other feats, but we didn't get that one. Intimidating Prowess. Um, we can add our strength to Persuasion. Potentially could be useful, especially if we want to be evil. Actually, that kind of fits us quite well. So we'll take Intimidating Prowess. We have a strength bonus, and we, we want to be a little bit evil. So let's go with that. Fighter. So, uh, bonus combat feat. Nice. That's all very good. We get one more point. Um, I think I'll put it in strength for just now. In, in the hopes that eventually we'll get another one. I don't know if the game is going to last long enough for that. Or like the side thing. Apparently it's 10 to 12 hours. Um, I don't think that you get the next ability point for quite a while. So, we'll see. Uh, I think it's like... Um, is it something like every... It must be every... I think it's every four levels. So if we make it to level eight, we'll get another one. 
So maybe, but I don't think I don't know if we're making it to level eight. Um, what kind of stuff we're we looking at here? We could do something with allies, but I don't know how many allies we have. Seize the moment. When an ally also has this feat, confirms a critical hit against an opponent you threaten, you can make an attack of opportunity against that opponent. Could be interesting. Don't know if it's something we want to do. Endurance does seem quite good. Yeah, if we want to push up our athletics. Let's take endurance. Yeah. Right. We can't go too wrong with a fighter is another thing. They're, they're generally quite okay. Weapon training. Starting at 5th level, a fighter can select one group of weapons. Whenever he attacks with a weapon from this group, he gains a plus one bonus on attacks and damage rolls. Okay, and he get further trained in another group of weapons. Uh, the fighter also adds this bonus to any combat maneuver checks made with weapons from his group. Okay, that's fine. Seems good to me. Here we get three more points. Athletics, uh, knowledge, knowledge. And... Uh, what do we want to do here? We want to pick one of these. So, hmm. Don't entirely know where we're going. Is there any down here that we can't take? Well, that it doesn't recommend that we take, that we want to take? Probably not, no. Uh, it doesn't, interestingly, it doesn't, wep uh, it doesn't, re it doesn't um, recommend weapon finesse. So that probably means that um, uh, dueling swords do work off strength, which makes sense. Uh, power attack means that we get le we get penalty to melee attack rolls, but we gain a bonus on all melee damage rolls. Could potentially be useful. Iron will is also potentially useful for like will saves, along with lightning reflexes. Similar reasoning. Um, let's take ourselves a. Uh, let's take great fortitude. Let's let's be better with uh, fortitude saves. And here, what are we looking for? We're looking for the one that contains uh, our uh, dueling swords, aren't we? Light blades? No. Heavy blades? Dueling sword. Yeah. Heavy blades. So we get a plus one bonus with Shakram, Dueling sword, Bastard sword, Elven curve blade, Estoc, Falcata, Falchion, Great sword, Long sword, Scimitar, Scythe, and Two bladed sword. All of that seems fantastic to me. And that is us done. So. I am going to end the character creation episode here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you are going to join me and, uh, what was it, Aldafon um, for, uh, well, for the uh, DLC. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in about 10 minutes for that. Goodbye. <laughs>